almost $29 trillion in debt, $75 billion a day in repo money printing, QE4 to the moon and back. Let's manipulate yield curve. Complete silence from the talking heads. When will some leader in the world just say stop it? It's beyond a joke now. The not so great USA nation and its banks are insolvent. We truly live in a post truth world. The USA is worse off than Argentina in financial terms by any measurable metric. The world is ignoring obvious insolvency and obscene money printing, placing valuations on companies that bear no relation to reality. That strategy would result in a balance sheet growth of roughly $180 billion a year, and net U.S. Treasuries purchases by the Fed, the sum of the red and gray bars, of roughly $375 billion a year over the next couple of years. That's the strategy. I just listened to Powell. The Fed plans to purchase, finance, print, monetize, almost half of the U.S. budget deficit for at least two years. In other words, expect more central bank bubble blowing while they ignore inflation. I was shocked that he spoke of inflation as a virtue. That's nuts. About four years ago, they changed the way they measure both inflation and GDP. The new measuring stick grossly underestimates inflation, and it overestimates GDP. That's intentional and criminal. I went back and calculated the GDP with the new measurements, and it increased the GDP by 50% using exactly the same data. They seek to mislead, not inform. It's QE infinity, it's theft, no cop will enforce the law to stop it. Don't call it QE4, call it raping the wealth of America. Complete with runaway inflation, stocks of zombie core at an all-time high, and more fake credit if you want to continue to be a banker's slave. This everything bubble will eventually burst again, and when it does, it will be even more calamitous than the last time. There is enormous inflation. You just need to remove the problem areas from the calculation in order for it make it look like there is no inflation. When assets deflation i.e. housing and stock market and the bond bubble bursts, one would have no alternative to preserve other than by gold and silver. In the absence of the gold, there is no way to prevent confiscation of savings through inflation. The issue is that they want inflation to reduce the debt load, but at the same time cost of living adjustment COLA to Social Security will go through the roof with high inflation. It's a tight rope they have to walk with, and hence why we will go splat soon enough. We're having inflation rates of 9.5% this year alone, QE4 will create even more at faster pace and will be the final killer of the middle class. This is the QE that will never end. And it is going to hurt a lot of people. QE isn't going to get banks to lend. It is going to get them to do what they did before, borrow from the market and lend to the government. This is why it isn't helping the people, only the cockroaches. And so, in just months of QE, pardon the Fed's open market purchases of treasuries, will return after a five years hiatus. Just don't call it QE, whatever you do. Open market purchases into infinity. The Fed will debase the dollar to the point of worthlessness. Our country is hoarding itself to death. Fiat bugs will get wiped out in the ensuing carnage. And expect all sorts of heroic efforts to save the stock market. Saving the economy is not as big of a priority. The economy is already rotting from the bottom. There is no way to save the economy. The problem is the pursuit of perpetual economic growth and inflation. There are no benefits to central bank-driven inflation. The central banks are not allowing unproductive debt to be cleansed from the economy via recession and depressions. Link the rate of change of private sector debt to the interest rates so the rate changes are market-driven. If only the sheeple understand what this is doing to our currency and economy. You can print all you want but you will not be able to fix value of currency going down, hence the purchasing power. Debt monetization is where they borrow money against your student loan, car loan, mortgage, etc. This further devalues the monetary system which is clearly already a house of cards about to fall. QE is purely monetary theft, financial fraud, currency manipulation or devaluation. QE is perpetual poverty for the working class and perpetual wealth for the printing class. The Fed lied. It will never reduce its balance sheet. It will continue to debauch the currency at a rate it sees fit to cover bonus, hookers, blow, malinvestment, and political spending sociopaths doing their worst. No one actually expects the Fed to tell the truth about anything at this point. Even if they told the truth, 
people would second guess it as psyops. People are actually investing, or gambling on how much they believe other people will believe the Fed. You can't even call this a free market, or an economy. What we have is. Fake money, fake banks, fake laws, fake markets, fake everything. The Fed already has 3.6-ish trillion of securities on the book, now it needs some more for smooth operations. Abandoned ship, I guess. I have a strong belief that the entire US economy since the dot-com bust has been a make-work net loss economy to keep the sheep employed and food on the table long enough to prepare for what is about to bust loose all across the realm. America's greatest enemy is not China or ISIS or Russia, it's the United States Federal Reserve. Jerome Powell is the real joker. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The US Fed has created the biggest financial bubble in the history of the world, and the patients are so addicted to the constant flow of basically free money, that the Fed fears, with good reason, the inevitable withdrawal pains upon reduction of IV flow. They can fiddle and dawdle and double speak until the reset turkey comes home to roost, but the fallback to reality becomes more damaging to all concerned the higher the mountain of non-productive debt grows by the day. Avalanches aren't a biggie from foothills, but are very fatal from high mountain peaks. The marketplace is going to force the Fed's hand, kicking and screaming to the altar of panic tightening. The reduction in asset purchases are a no-brainer for tapering, but the big surprise to the rest of the central banking world will be the necessity to bump interest rates up to prevent a currency crisis in the US dollar. Defending one's currency to prevent a literal run on the US banking system and financial markets with US securities sold to avoid immediate currency devaluation by foreign holders is a sad repeat of history for a country spending at every level well beyond its means. The shenanigans in Washington, with one party ramrodding of massive, additional federal spending at over 10% of national debt extant for a fundamentally bankrupt country, is a black swan that may very well start the economic and financial system avalanches leading to an inevitable crash. When a central bank such as the Fed walks on a tightrope high in the air over a windy canyon, a mere pigeon burp can cause the daredevils to go airborne into the abyss. There is no net big enough to prevent this event from being fatal to the future well-being of the citizens of the United States. And the world by association. This consternation over inflation is going to get awful tedious if the Fed's term, transitory, ends up being measured in years instead of just a few weeks or months, which seems highly probable at this point. That's likely what they're counting on. The Fed, in poo-pooing the inflation issue, is camouflaging their real intent, a steady, surreptitious default through inflation on the debt the Treasury is issuing. There is no other way to plausibly deal with the accumulation of government debt with Congress adding trillions each fiscal year. Outright default would be way too disruptive. Increasing taxes sufficiently to cover the level of current spending would cause a revolt. By promoting inflation, the Fed can divert attention away from the government, Congress and themselves and shift the blame onto businesses greedy to raise prices and onto labor for demanding wages to make up for the declining value of the currency. They are trying to get a head start before the public figures out their ruse. The Federal Reserve's monetary system is coming to an end. The monetary system is a major component of the whole economic system. Despite that, today we take it for granted and don't even ask ourselves how it works and if it is the best solution available or the correct way to manage things. Even though it appears to be stable, history shows that monetary systems changed periodically in the last century, 20 to 30 years on average. The main difference between our current monetary system and previous monetary system is that today it is entirely based on fiat currency, in contrast to older monetary systems that were backed by gold. The costs of the Vietnam War led to the US abandoning Bretton Woods. Dollar was no longer backed by gold but by oil, the petrodollar. 75% of oil transactions and 60% of international trade is conducted in dollar. The world has been pumping up the US economy this way. The US dollar is today backed with oil, the oil beneath the ground in Saudi Arabia and all the other countries who only accept US dollar in exchange for their oil. If that wasn't the case, the 1971 debacle would have blown up and ended before 1980. Think of the countries that sell, or sold, oil in currencies other than US dollar, Russia, Syria, Iran, Libya, Iraq, 
before we invaded, Venezuela, etc. All countries on our hit list. When Euro accepting Saddam invaded US dollar only Kuwait we saw one of the fastest US military buildups in history quickly put an end to that. All of our pointless wars haven't been about the oil, it has been over the petrodollar. The whole petrodollar scenario that occurred in tandem with removing the gold standard is what has kept the dollar as the world reserve currency since 1971. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.